How you guys doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's stand on our feet tonight. <laughs> Amen. What are you here for tonight? You're here to praise the Lord. Amen. You're here to hear his word. Amen. Well, let it be planted in us. Amen. And bring forth uh, a good harvest. Because the word of God is a seed. Amen, church. And we can receive his word even during worship because all of our songs are filled with the word of God. Amen. So uh, let's just worship the Lord. Let's Let's have a sweet, just awesome uh, praise and worship service today, tonight, God, where, where he receives all the glory. Amen. And I know each one of you guys, that's what your heart's desire is, to give God glory. So let's, let's please him tonight with our worship. Amen. Let's give him it all, our whole being, body, mind, soul, spirit, it's all yours, Jesus. Amen. Father, we love you. Jesus, we do glorify and magnify you in this house. Holy Spirit, we say, have your way in us. We surrender. We ask you to fill this house with your glory tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I sought the Lord, oh. and he answered me, and he delivered me from every fear to look on him already there'll never be a shame there'll never be a shame this poor man cried and the lord heard me and saved me from my enemies the son of god surrounds his saints he will deliver them he will deliver them Magnify the Lord with me, yeah, yeah. come and talk his name together. The Lord with me, yeah, yeah. come and talk his name forever. Oh, oh taste and see. That the Lord is good, oh blessed is he who hides in him, oh fear the Lord, oh all you saints, he give you everything, he give you everything, yeah, magnify the Lord with me, come and talk. Oh, magnify. 
just bless the Lord every day and night. Never ending praise. May our ends to rise. Let us bless the Lord every day and night. Oh, never ending praise. May our ends to rise. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. Hey, yeah, hey, hey. And right now, right in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You're unchangeable. Unshakable, unstoppable. That's what you are. Oh, that's what you are. That's what you are. That's what you are. You're unchangeable, unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's what you are. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name is. Praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You're unstoppable. That's what you, that's what you are. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's what you are. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God, you are God alone. Yeah. Oh Lord, in the good times and bad. Oh, you are on your throne, Lord. You are God alone. You're unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's what you are. You're unshakable. Unshakable, you're unstoppable. 
unstoppable. That's what you are. Hey, hey, hey. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on the throne. Still God alone. Unchangeable. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's what you You're unshakable, unstoppable, that's oh, what you are. That's what you are. Yeah. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness song says, are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling, have you come to the end of yourself, do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Yeah, yeah. Leave behind your regrets, your mistakes. Call today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life reborn, Jesus is calling. Oh, come, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Right. 
Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. For Jesus is calling. He's calling. Hey, yeah. Father, we have come to bow down in worship, lifting up our hearts, we bow down in praise. I'm singing
Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. He first loved us. Right, church. Amazing is his love towards us. Glory to God. I hope you're touched by the Lord tonight. I know you are. Let's go ahead and have our seats. What a sweet time in his presence. He is a God of his word. Can you say amen, church? What he says, he does. Amen. And he meets us in his presence. Amen. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered in his name, he's here in our midst. And when we lift him up, what does he do? He draws us near to him. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. I felt his presence tonight. Amen. And sometimes even when we don't feel it, we do it. Amen. We worship him with all that we are because he's worthy of our praise. Amen. Not always about a feeling. Can you say amen? But it's good to get a feeling every once in a while. Amen. It's the confirmation of his love to you. He touches you. He changes your life in his presence. When you look back six months, a year down the road, I know many of you people in the faith, seasoned ones in the faith, have looked back down the road that you've walked and you've seen the hand of God in your life. Amen. It's the confirmation of his love to you. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And even as we heard this morning in Philippians chapter 1, he who began a good work in you is faithful to perform his work until the day of Christ. Amen. 
Hey, Amen. He's doing it. He's doing it. We just have to cooperate with that grace. Amen. And as we do, we're going to grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. It really happens just like that. It's that simple, John John. It's that simple. You hear the word of God and you obey it. And when you do it, he grows you up. Amen? And being grown up in Jesus is way better than being grown up in whatever this is. Okay? You got some good guys to look up to, John John. You do. And you want to pattern your life after people that love Jesus and live for Jesus. Okay? But as you follow Jesus, he's going to build you up in your spiritual man, and you're going to become more like Jesus. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, if you didn't get a chance to give this morning, there's baskets in the back. Drop it off back there. We'll make sure it gets where it needs to go. We're a blessed church. We are. Um, I've been reminded of that so many times this last season, and we're coming into a new season. But I'm going to continue to say we're a blessed group. We're a blessed church, and we're blessed to be a blessing church. And when you're a blessing, guess what? You get another blessing. So keep being a part of the blessing, amen? Amen. Let's pray, and uh, then we'll transition. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you fill us up. Lord, that you don't leave us as orphans, Father, but you've adopted us as sons and daughters of the living God. Lord, we want to be mature, disciplined followers of you, and that's why we're here on a Sunday night, because we want to hear your word, and we want to grow in you from faith to faith. And glory to glory. So give us your word tonight, God. We're ready to receive. Bless the ears that hear and bless the hearts that are sown into tonight. And bless our pastor as he brings forth your mighty word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's welcome Pastor Jim. you, Jordan. How's that? Uh, okay, honey. I get it. You kind of like me, huh? Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. I'm going to continue talking about spiritual warfare because I have so much on it. Amen. And so... Let's go over to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter th- uh, 6, let's go to 6, Ephesians 6. Verse 10, finally my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world or age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand... Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Amen? Amen. And Paul goes on that utterance may be given to him. Well, I hope that utterance is given to me tonight and to you. Can you say amen? Amen. Last week we we went over a few things, and um, we also passed in review about a couple of things. So I probably won't do a lot of that tonight, but who knows? Amen. And we talked a lot about angels last week and their ministry, going over into Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7, and also uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? 
And then we also took a look at Psalms 103 and verse 20. Bless the Lord, all, you, all your angels that excel in strength. Amen. Uh, hearkening to the voice of God's word. And we found out in Ephesians chapter 1 and 2 that we are the body of Christ on this earth. He's far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. All those ones we just named in, he, in Ephesians chapter 6. And then if that's not enough, he's seated next to the heavenly father on the right hand of the father where he ever lives to make intercession for us. But we also positionally in him are seated in heavenly places according to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. And so we established this in the last uh, couple of times that we taught on this, that you and I have authority, that we have been given not only uh, dunamis, which is the miraculous power of God. And Pastor Craig went over uh, one of the, the portions of Scripture of the go ye in uh, Matthew 28. Also in Mark 16, it tells us that we're allowed to, in His name, cast out demons, heal the sick, on and on. Amen? Amen. And so, in His name, we have authority, we have power. How many of you really feel super powerful? Let's be honest. Come on, y'all feel super powerful? You know, because we know who we are. We're flesh and blood, but we have a born-again spirit that's greater on the inside than what's on the outside. And trying to get this mind renewed to the point of where we totally believe it is difficult sometimes. Because, you know, being encased in flesh, we still have uh, desires of the flesh and of the fleshly mind, and we fall from time to time. And then the spirit of condemnation gets on us. Of course, if you listen to pastor's message this morning, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, There's therefore now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. But there's a caveat. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you and I free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So there is a caveat. We, we do, even though we're born again, sealed with the Holy Spirit in here, we are being sanctified by that same spirit that lives inside of us right now, who is moving us away from the old us. Yes. Of course, yes. the longer you've been walking with the Lord, the better at resisting sin and temptation you should get. Does that make sense? Uh, because the greater one lives in you. My nature changed on the inside, but that grace that's on the inside of you and I has been working its way out to, to the outward man. Amen? Uh, I'm finding myself even being a little bit more sweeter lately and a little more amenable with, with things in my life. You know, you see me here at church and I'm one way, but sometimes I'm not always perfect at home. And don't look at me that way because some of you are the same way. There's a few of you, though, that, that have been doing this for a while and you've really caught it and you're the same at home as you are here. And you've moved along. That fruit of the Spirit is working in you. Amen. I always say this, even though we're talking about the supernatural power of God, the dunamis, there's also the exousia, which is the authoritative power. Um, I think the person that's more spiritual isn't the one that can operate in the spiritual gifts more than somebody else. It's the person who can walk in the fruit of the Spirit, amen? And, and the whole bent of Romans chapter 8 is teaching us not to walk according to the flesh, but to put the flesh off, amen? How do you do that? You mortify it. Yeah. And you mortify it through prayer. You mortify it through worship. You mortify it by renewing your mind to the Word and coming into agreement with the Word and telling the old self or that part of your mind that's flesh and blood, carnal with all kinds of memories of sin, no, you don't rule anymore. Come on. The, the new creation reality on the inside us is in the driver's seat. Amen. And we practice our Christianity on a daily basis the best we can. We have a law on the inside of us that's no longer tables of stone. We have it written on the tables of our fleshly heart. And the Holy Ghost is in there to reinforce it. And our mind is being renewed to the Word because the battlefield a lot of times is in the mind. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And that's why we put on the helmet of salvation. On. One of the things I believe, about, and I'm not going to teach on the armor tonight, even though I got a great message on that, a great teaching. Uh, but I do want to touch on a few of the things about the armor because the Bible tells us to put on the full armor. And I've said this when I teach on this. Putting on the full armor of God, you know, a lot of people get up in the morning and go, well, I'm putting my shoes and my belt on. And, you know, <laughs> you know, you can do that if you want, if it helps you get a visual kind of, you know, interaction with, uh, with this truth here. 
Uh, but putting on the armor of God, all the armor of God is made up of the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God is working by faith in your life. All the armor pieces work by faith. Amen. Yeah. And so putting on the helmet of salvation, one of the main parts of that is that you already know that you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we can go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 that we are created for God unto good works. Amen. We're his carefully crafted poem. And all of that, what pastor said this morning, it's, it's having a mindfulness and awareness of who you are in Christ. And knowing that when we are walking in this world under the commission of God, we're not going to always do it all right all the time. And the devil will take advantage of that to condemn us and try to stop us. Amen. I've noticed in my own life at times when, when I kind of mess up, you kind of, if you're not mature in the Lord, and I have been mature, and in the past I wasn't so mature, you get knocked out and you go, well, what the heck? It's kind of like a diet, right? You're like doing really good and you just, oh, I just got to have a piece of bread. Next thing you know, you're eating bread all week long and the few pounds that you got rid of are right back again, right? But we, we have that propensity even where sin is concerned if, we don't, if we're not careful. This is one of the reasons why I really believe the local church and a body of Christ where you're being taught on a weekly basis because I see this place as a, a disciple training center. This is, this is a school of... Uh, of learning of God's Word and having it reinforced in you. Some of you know a lot of this, but you have to get it reinforced on a regular basis because the carnal mind or the flesh and blood mind has the propensity to, to kind of forget, to, for it to go away if you don't continue to renew it. Amen? Yeah. The heart don't forget, but the heart and the mind got to be together. You know, we're not three people. We're one person, yeah. even though we're spirit, soul, and body. And so well, what has this got to do with warfare? Well, warfare, ha having your mind and your being uh, in unity has a lot to do with warfare. Amen. Because when warfare comes, I mean, when the deeper you get into it, the more you kind of bug the enemy, he comes to bug you. And he looks, I mean, he can't read your mind, but he's looking for a chink in your armor. You say, devil, the Mr. D I told you, Mr. Devil don't have a clue who we are, probably. It'll be the little imps. I think most of the principalities and powers don't really know who you are. I think I made one aware of me one time, but he's probably forgot who I am. Maybe i got to go yell at him some more in the spirit. Amen. Uh, but, but for the most part, unless you're just hammering heaven all the time, that principality or power of the area of Hutchinson and Reno County uh, uh, here in Kansas probably don't know who you are. But those that get on their knees and really know how to pray effectually, he, they do get his attention. And the little, the little devils on the lower level, they, they have to report to these things. Listen, even though you don't see it, the kingdom of darkness is organized to a, to a point. Do you understand that? I mean, if you don't think so, just watch some of these crazy people in government that are flowing with the devil and the Antichrist. They're organized, you know, and, and the problem is with uh, the people of God is we're kind of disconnected a lot of times. That's why church is a part... Uh, has a part to play in your ability to fight the devil. Uh, for instance, you know, we prayed for some people this morning. Well, you know, why can't they just pray for themselves? Why don't they just get healed themselves? Well, because when your mind gets assailed a lot of times, you need somebody else who's, who's outside looking in that's not, uh, what do you call it, subjective? I need to be subjective. What's the other one? Uh, uh, yeah, when you're subjective, you're in the middle of all this. When you're objective, you're outside looking in. You're not as emotionally invested in it. And so when you come up and pray, it's not your life that's on the line. It's theirs, and you're like, bless God, I can get into this, yes. where the devil's already put seeds of doubt and fear in people's minds. See, the battle wages in your mind because if the devil can stop you in your mind, if your helmet of salvation isn't firmly in place, amen, if he can stop you in your mind, he can stop you from being effectual when you pray. Yes. And I hear this new thing. I, I'm not sure I totally understand it, but I'm, I'm going to make an attempt. Um, I know on my watch, when I go into the, the app for my watch, it'll say mindfulness. And I'm like, what the heck does this mean, Lori? What do you mean mindfulness? I don't get it. Does that mean I'm supposed to be walking around thinking about myself all day long or what? I mean, I don't really get it that good, but I think this is what it kind of means for you and I. It's to 
foster and nurture an atmosphere and reflect upon the Word of God on a daily basis, and you're standing with the Lord. Yeah. With, Mary, I mean, you're kind of into this stuff. Is that kind of what mindfulness would be as a Christian? Is being aware of your surroundings? Yeah, but we're not new agey. God has uh, what he says, meditate on my word day and night, right? Joshua 1.8. So Mary says it's, if you didn't hear it, Mary says it's about kind of meditation. And it's being used lately as a, as a new age kind of thing. But, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. God had it first. It just gets perverted. Joshua 1.8 says we're supposed to meditate on the word of God. Amen. Mull it over and over in our minds. Think godly thoughts. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. And so that's what I would call a Christian mindfulness. It may not be the equivalent uh, uh, of a definition in the world, but that's how I'm enabling in it. Is, is having your mind stayed on Christ. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Does that make sense? Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, we're, we're, we're kind of passing in review a little bit. But keeping, keeping that helmet of salvation on, is, is imperative, I think, where we keep that mindfulness of who we are in Christ. Yes. I need to get me a better deal here. It doesn't ever stay up. Kind of irritating. Because <laughs> I can't see it with the lights coming down on it. Amen. But it protects it, so praise the Lord. So keeping that, that helmet of salvation on, and praying in the Spirit, watching. You know what? God is calling uh, the mature Christians to, to, a, to a ministry of watchfulness, of praying, of being watchmen on the wall. I, I go out on the Internet sometimes and look at all these different people, and, and uh, some of them are cool and some of them are a little strange, but there's people that call themselves watchmen and watchwomen. And they're kind of trying to take the, the temperature of the climate, spiritually speaking, uh, as we get closer to the end and closer to possibly the rapture of the church soon. I hope it's soon. Amen. And they're keeping up, a lot of them, on current events as it pertains to Israel and how, how it might affect us. And I think that's pretty good in a lot of respects. just depends on the person, how, how much knowledge they have of the Word and... and uh, you know, we need watchmen and watchwomen because a, a lot of Christians are just going about their daily business and we have to, we have to work, we have to take care of kids, we got to fix cars, fix houses, do all that stuff, right? But there's still a part where we have to set aside some time to be mindful of the things of God Amen. and to be looking, okay? Now, a lot of people are, are looking and they're getting caught up in, the fear thing. I mean, every day you go and you listen to some of these people and they've got a new thing to be afraid of. Come on. Well, the government's going to do this and they're getting a new bill and they're doing that, you know, and some of it's true. Uh, I elect people. Hopefully they're supposed to go and take care of that and be watchmen and women on that, right? On. And, and uh, that doesn't mean you and I don't need to know what's going on, but on the same token, I've said this so many times before, we've got to keep it in perspective, yeah. okay? I hope you're getting this. <clears throat> you know, one of the things also, before I move to another one, Luke 10, 17 says, where Jesus sent out the 70, to, he gave them power and authority. It was kind of a, a, a pre-run to what we get. Amen. Okay? This was before uh, salvation as we know it, and he was still ministering as an Old Testament prophet to the Jews. But kind of as a precursor to what we have as the body of Christ, he anointed these 70 with, the, with, with anointing of power and authority. And they went out and they were casting out devils and they were healing people in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they came back and they said, and the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject us, unto us in thy name. Woo! Yeah, nobody's seen this before. We, got, we know a lot of people that are devil possessed. They go to the priest. The priest can't do anything. They just kind of get money out of them, and the exorcists just get money. But we went out there, and we told those devils to go. They went. Yes. When we laid hands on people, they got healed. Amen. 
Praise God. And they're just rejoicing. And, and wouldn't you want to rejoice if you're seeing the power of God come down and touch people? And man, it's just exciting when the Spirit of the Lord is moving through you and the anointing. And you're seeing some results in people's lives as they change. Amen. Changing hearts and lives. Glory to God. Right? But Jesus, Jesus straightened him out. And he says, you know what? I saw Satan fall as lightning. Don't, don't rejoice just because you're, you know, you're seeing devils being cast. He rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. And that's what I would say to us tonight. You know, even though we're going to see great things and stuff, uh, we need to remember that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. It don't get any better than that, church. Because if you understand your righteousness as opposed to the righteousness of God... Without Jesus Christ, we'd split hell wide open. Amen. But we've been rescued. We've been redeemed. We've been reconciled back to God. Can you say amen? amen. And we need to, that's the part of the, I don't know why the Lord's taking me down this road. I wasn't planning on doing this part of it. But, but we, we must have that mindfulness. And that's the part of understanding your salvation. Soteriology, they call it. It's the the. The Christian science, if you will, of, of understanding the salvation that Jesus secured to you through his vicarious death. Amen. And part of that is, is spiritual authority. Man. So what about when I mess up and I try to go against the devil? You need to put it under the blood immediately. Well, I've always heard that once saved, always saved. You can just do whatever you want, live how you want. I'm a grace case. And you'll get, you'll get your teeth kicked in. That, you might die and go to heaven. But down here, you might have hell on earth. You have, to, you have to live right because living right positions you. We're created unto good works for the Lord. That's what he said. We're, Pastor talked about it. You can go read it better than me quoting it in Ephesians uh, chapter 2 and verse 10. Amen? We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. I mean, while we're here as agents of the new kingdom that, that's to come... Uh, God wants to make a distinction between those that live righteously. Now, nothing against anybody that's out of church tonight doing whatever they're doing. Some churches don't even have church on Sunday night. But, you know, some of us are like, I've always went to church on Sunday night, and so I'm at church. And I like hearing the word because all week long I hear everything else that's crazy. I got to get some of it. You know, and some of you work and you don't have as much time to put into study as others do. Amen? So, what if everything went down? What if we had a, a solar flare and all of the infrastructure went down, just like we had a couple weeks ago when people's phones didn't work? Mine don't work half the time anyway. But, but anyway, what would you do? The, us older people would get by. Come on. Amen? But if it went down for a long enough period of time, I mean, what, what would we do? I would... I would just be fine with coming to church as long as we could get some music. We got acoustic instruments, so we could still praise the Lord. Yep. Amen? So that brings me to the subject that I want to talk tonight because we've been talking about warfare, and we talked about the principalities and powers. Amen? Number one, the principalities on the negative and on the positive. The ones on the negative are agents of Satan. Okay? And they rule over countries. If... There's one over America. There's one over every state, okay? Do they always get to exert their influence? They're always trying. But if, if there are godly people or righteous people, even some that aren't necessarily exactly born again, but they've been raised conservatively to believe certain things, and their bent is to, to live righteously and do good and just go to work and raise a family, when you get an area like that, those principalities and powers don't have as much sway in that area. So what do the powers do? They work for the principalities. They're also fallen angels. And they try to get a hold of media to blanket an area and a culture with a mindset that's bent towards evil. And those of us that have been alive for 50, 60 years, we've seen it change. Amen. Evil's always been here, but we've seen it progress. I mean, even me coming out of the hippie days, we were pretty wild. But this is even worse, okay? I'm just saying, if Satan can get his, his powers 
which are the propaganda ministers working through media, messing with your... Because when, when the media gets your mindset going a certain direction, then the enemy, these little devils or little powers, can speak into your mind. Because right. once you start having patterns of thinking in a particular way, they have an entrance into your mind. They can't read your mind, but they read your body language. But if you speak back to them, then you have a conversation going. Do you understand that? Okay. Because just like I can talk to you in the spirit, in the, in the solical realm, we still have a voice that if, and those, those things can read uh, or can, they can speak through that, that area in the spirit. If you don't believe it, some of you have been assailed by them many times. So the helmet of salvation thing once again. So anyway, you got those principalities and powers, and they're always rule, working to, to, to rule an area. And what I said is, you can't just cast them out. Demons are of a different ilk. Did you know that? Okay, you could take this or leave it, but there's plenty, of, uh, there's plenty of information towards it. Once there was Nephilim on this earth, they were the, the product uh, of the cohabitation of women and, and fallen angels. And they had offspring. Those offspring died, but their spirits are still roaming the earth. They're earthbound until the end of the age and until the end of the millennial kingdom, and then they're all going to be thrown into the lake of fire. But right now, a certain amount of them are walking this earth. And they're familiar spirits, they're evil spirits, they're spirits of depravity and wickedness, on and on. They, they impersonate. They impersonate dead people. They impersonate gods, so-called gods. Okay, They have that range down here on the earth. And they're the ones that most of the time are messing with you and I. Those are the things that we're called to fight hand-to-hand, -hand, so to speak. And we have the ability, once we recognize and discern them, to cast them out. Like you come in this church, recognize that spirit's here. I command you to get out of my church in Jesus' name. You leave this vicinity in the mighty name of Jesus. That if they bug you and they fight you, then you call for the angels of heaven and you say, Father, send your angels to clear these things out. But once again, when they get a hold of somebody's mind in a stronghold, that person can keep bringing them in. They'll piggyback in until you pray and sanctify your, your sanctuary on a regular basis. Say, is this real? It's real. You need to do it to your home, too. It's not a flaky cast out devils out of a doorknob thing. But it's, but it's to plead the blood over your home and, and understanding the power of the blood. Amen. Hey, you can plead blood all day long if you don't understand the power of it. And it's just a nice little saying. It's not going to work. It's got to be something that your heart and soul and your faith is into when you do it. And a knowing that when you say, I plead the blood and I command every unclean thing to leave my house, my property, you have no right in this place. And of course, they'll challenge you and you still resist them. And you stand there like, like a rock and you go, no, I told you, you're not coming. You keep on coming up here, I'm calling the angels down on you. I'm pleading the blood. I'm going to get worship music. I'm going to play it in my house. Uh, it's going to permeate my mind. My kids, whether they like it or not, are going to hear it all day long. I'm going to hook up a shundai, and I'm going to call for the power of God to hit my neighborhood. Uh, you know, you chase them out. But principalities and powers, you can't do that. You can't go, well, I command you to leave Kansas. You can say it. But as long as there's a significant amount of people in our state and our nation that want to flow with that, they have, the, they have a right there. I know you might not want to believe it, but it's the truth. Well, what do we do then, Pastor? Well, we definitely pray against them. Those things have, have to have interaction and fight with, with other principalities from God's realm, the other angels. Okay? What we do is we pray. And we pray for our area. And when we pray for our area, we pray for people's hearts. Yes. And there are those imps that are, that are the messengers or the, the, the agents of those principalities and powers, like divorce, like drugs, like, you know, name, you name it, sex, whatever you want to, whatever you want to go with. And, and those are the things that hop on people. And you got the media that's always playing all these shows with all this nastiness. And, you know, people's minds get acclimated to it. That's our job to start praying against that, the workings of the powers. And then we got to pray for hearts to be changed. And, and we pray all day long. But then we got to talk to people and give them the word. Like Pastor said, it'll go into them. And then they'll be challenged to make a decision. 
And hopefully they'll make decisions for Christ. So the more people that get saved in your area, the more people whose minds get more and more changed towards the things of God, whether they get saved or not. There's a lot of people that aren't really born again, but they're traditional Christians. Yes. And that's still okay, better than nothing, right? Because they still are, they still are soft-hearted enough towards us. And if you haven't noticed, a lot of people are, uh, are getting very hard towards Christians persecution's right around the corner unless we stand up in the spirit and fight. And what do you mean fight? We're going to fight with people? No, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood with fist fights. I mean, my goodness, if it comes to that, we're, we're going to have a lot of trouble. Okay, so we need to be praying. I mean, pray for that neighbor across the street. You don't necessarily even at that point got to go talk to him. Pray for them. Get that worker at, at work and and secretly pray for them and pray that God will give you a, an ability to speak to them because as you change their hearts, you displace the powers. You break the illusion. Does this make sense? Is this way over everybody's head? I hope not. I know there are people in here that understand this, but babies don't always understand this. And just like, you know, the pack of wolves out in the wilderness will go for the weakest or the oldest... Devils do the same thing. They look for the people that are just susceptible to, to drama and different things in the body of Christ, and they go after them, and then the squeaky wheel gets most of the attention. And while we're giving attention to the squeaky wheels, and I, get this right, okay, then the, then the enemy will come in and start slashing and hashing, and by the time you recognize something's going on in your family, your church, or your city, or your state, it's already got a... Got a a couple of good bites in and kills in. Amen? And people don't pray for their pastors. Don't pray for their women's leaders, their, their intercessors. And pray that God will protect their church while they're at home. They pray over this church. I'm telling you, you know, leaders in the body of Christ are human. They get tired. They get worn out. They get discouraged, just like you do. And so we're praying for you, you pray for us, and then we, we build a strong spiritual fence around this, boundary around us. Okay, well, one of, one of the things, getting off that subject of the principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this age and, and everything, you know, we have quite a job, don't we? But we just, every one of us does a little bit and grows in this. Uh, you'll, you're going to see results. I mean, we need, to, we need to realize that the earth right now as it is, this, this age, we're going to come back during the millennial reign, but the earth really is the way it is right now. This, this generation, this age is really not our home. We're called pilgrims and strangers. And, and, and so, yeah, there's stuff going on down here that affects our physical man, amen? But at the same time, we have a hope that goes beyond this world. And... and and it's some, some way you have to gear your mind not only to navigate this world, but to perceive that other world. I know people hear me and I go, oh, I'm almost 70. A few months from now, I'll be 70. Well, don't you feel old? Yeah, I do kind of, but I'm kind of glad. And a lot of people are like, I don't want to be old. They're 90 years old. And they go, I ain't old. Well, that's a kind of a good confession, but it's kind of not true. <laughs> I embrace my age. I mean, I don't like having aches and pains and no hair on my head and blah, blah, blah. And, but, but, you know, I know when I get to heaven, things are going to change and I'm going to look good again because I'll be 33 and strong and healthy and, you know, all that good stuff. And so my hope has gone from here to where I'm headed. Not that I want to die anytime soon or not, but on the other hand, you know, I'm kind of looking for that great adventure. Someday, you know, someday... I'll live as long as the Lord wants me here. But, but I want to I remove my mind from all the fear of being older and look forward to the future because you know what? I actually really do believe in heaven. I think some people say they do, but they, they don't act like they do. But I got, a, I got a mission to fulfill, so do you. you know, and, and as long as God's got a plan for you and I and a purpose, we'll be here. But I don't want to be so invested in this world that I'm just walking around in fear all the time. Too afraid to do anything for God, you know. 
Uh, hallelujah. And I'm not saying that I don't try to take care of my health the best I can, but, you know, <laughs> it's getting harder and harder. Can anybody say amen? amen? And I know you want to keep a good mentality and look at my, my mom. I mean, she cooked dinner for us twice last week, cleaned her own house. I mean, what a blessing to be her age and to be as healthy as she is. We've all had all these colds and everything. And Jesus has kept my mom from getting any of it. Amen. And I mean, I'm telling you, this stuff that's been going around will kick the snot out of you. Yes, I mean, that's no lie. Uh, I just praise God for my mom. You say, well, why would God? Well, probably because she's lived long enough to have every flu you could get. <laughs> the other thing is, is she's a good woman of God. She's Amen. positioned herself. Uh, and, and God is just allowing her to have uh, a good life in her old age. You know, I'm really proud of my mom. And she, now let me say this though, my mother really takes care of herself. She is a disciplined person with her eating and everything, and she takes care of her health. So you can't just live any way you want and keep your health, right? Man. But you know, if you can be blessed and, and still be productive, and I, I mean, I just don't want my mom to ever go. And I want her to stay till the rapture, and we'll go together. Amen? So anyway, all right, let's, let's move on. Joshua chapter 6. I want to talk to you as we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. I mean, the Bible gives us certain patterns that we can draw upon. Can you say amen? And we can, we can look at their examples. And we can, for the most part, even if it's in the Old Testament, we can pull it over into the New Testament. Or we can glean something out of it. Joshua chapter 6, I think I want to start at verse 15. Now, you know, the, the children of Israel under Joshua finally went across over into the promised land. And after they got over there, one of the things they had to deal with was what? Jericho. And you know, the whole, you know I can't do the whole story here because I got other stuff to get to. Uh, Rahab was the only one. You know, that's where we get that, that idea of the scarlet thread of redemption. Remember, she had to put that thread on her corner of, of the wall, and that's the only corner of the wall that didn't get totally demolished because of her kindness towards the people of Israel. Good point. And, and she was even a harlot, but because she was kind to, to the spies that went there, uh, she got to come over and become part of Israel, and she's even in the lineage of Jesus. Let me tell you, Jesus, Jesus has some, some, some people that have been redeemed and reconciled. And, you know, they didn't continue to live like they did. But, but God had a plan. He incorporated a lot of people in Jesus' lineage. Amen. And so they're over there. And the priests, and you'll go back and read this this week. So God gives uh, Joshua instruction on how to deal with this situation. The walls were impenetrable. And so the Israelites got the Ark of the Covenant and God gave them instruction for seven days to walk around that, that wall and keep their mouth shut, right? And on the seventh day, they were to walk around it seven times and Joshua told the people, don't, don't, don't sing, don't say anything. But the musicians that went ahead with their horns after the seventh time began to blow them and all the people were instructed at that time to begin to shout and praise the Lord. After seven times around, the seven trumpets, they, they had blown the horns, and God did a miracle, and all the walls fell down. Yes. But they were praising the Lord. I don't think they were just going, Wah! they were probably shouting psalms, shouting praise the Lord, you know, hallelujah, whatever they did in their day, however they praised God, and those horns blowing. And I mean, it made everything fall in, and then, of course, God had them slay all those people. But it was, a, it was a result of them allowing God to do the miracle. There's times, you know, when I said we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, even though flesh and blood are motivated and get in our face. Don't kid yourself. They've persecuted Christians and are killing them in the world somewhere. You know? But still, the spirit that is motivating people to do that is in the spirit. And we have power. We have power. We have power in the name of Jesus to bind that spirit. But if we get in the flesh and we try to fight in the flesh, then, you know, live by the sword is to die by the sword. Not saying that I'm, 
all about laying down and being a rug because I'm not that guy. I'm just saying to try and live peaceable and to fight something that is a spiritual force trying to take mankind and the world to, into the, the Antichrist system, I have the, the best thing I can do is pray and understand my enemy and know my weapons of warfare that aren't carnal but mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. Can you say amen? And so there's the power in praise. And so in Joshua uh, chapter 6, verse 15 through 20, it says in verse 15, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose up early about the dawning of the day, and they encompassed the city after the manner of seven times. Only on that day they encompassed the city seven times. Okay? Verse 20. So the people shouted with the priests and blew the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him, they took the city. Go over to Second Chronicles. Some of you know where I'm headed. Second Chronicles 20. In 2 Chronicles 20, we have the story where uh, Moab and Ammon is coming against Israel. And Jehoshaphat and his, his people are scared because they've been, they've been having border wars just like they're having today. Amen? And uh, these people were progressing. And so after they prayed... The prophet came, and in 2 Chronicles 20, 20 the, And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, see, the people were afraid because this, this multitude of Moab and Ammon coming against Israel, they were, they were uh, prepared soldiers. They were ready for battle. They were uh, exercised in battle, amen. And it looked like, okay, we're going like lambs to the slaughter here. It's going to be, you know, they're going to win because... We're outnumbered, we're outclassed. But you know, when you pray and you got God on your side, you're never outclassed. We need to remember, remember, the battle's going to be in the mind and there's going to be things that face us. Sickness, disease, you know, poverty, people, whatever, amen. The situation in our country. I mean, I know that eventually we're going a certain direction. There's no reversing it. But can we still have a window of grace? I don't know about you, but I'm believing for that. I'm praying for that. But I'm also preparing for if it doesn't. My mind is prepared. But at the same time, I'm not neutral when I'm, when I'm looking at these things that are going on. I'm asking God to forgive my nation. I'm asking God to, to remember his people. Yes. Remember Abraham yes. and Lot. And Abraham. Well, if there's 50 down there in Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, if there's 50, I'll, I'll spare them. Well, pre-adventure if there's 30. Pre-adventure if there's 10. Yeah, if there's 10. Well, there wasn't. I mean, even Lot's own family didn't have it together. Amen? But God still delivered Lot out of it. Well, I believe in this country there's millions of Christians here, true believers that love God. People that, that even those, like I said, that are not complete, sold-out believers, they still have enough uh, of Americanism in them. They believe in the Constitution. They believe one nation under God. Amen. And, and they are amenable to people of faith. Amen. And God will bless them for that. Yes. And bring them into it. I mean, I believe they're going to come into the flock, those that are on the kind of outskirts. Can you say amen? amen. And I believe that, that there is hope for this nation still. Amen. 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 Well, even if things go south in the political realm that, that we're, we're seeing... That, you know, when things get tough, that's when God starts to shine through his people. Right. I mean, as long as everything's going hunky-dory and the economy's great and life is great and nothing wrong with living life and having a good one. But as long as it's that way, people are nominal Christians. People that are kind of traditional Christians and not truly born again, they really don't need God except for, you know, twice a year, Christmas and Easter. And God needs, needs people's hearts to be in this thing because this is for all the marbles. It's for all the marbles. This is for eternity. Amen? And I tell you, God cares about your life on this earth, but he cares more about your eternal salvation. Okay? Just remember that. Um, 
Because you may see some things before we all are taken out of here. And it's going to challenge your faith. I mean, most of us, except for the soldiers that have been overseas and fought in wars and stuff and have taken trips to third world countries, most of us haven't got a clue. I mean, even when God took me over to Sweden, Sweden's a pretty cool place. Everything's clean. Everybody's got food. Even the bums were dressed better than most of us. Just saying. I didn't go to El Salvador like Pastor Craig or Pastor Kelly when he went to Hungary when uh, it was still under Russian occupation and you had to, the churches had to hide. And when you got off the airplane, they had Gatlin guns or, or whatever you call it, those, those burp guns that they used to use. You know, uh, things have changed there, but there's still that spirit there. Amen. Uh, you might see some things change here and your mind is going to have to be right. Okay. I'm not believing for it, and I think you're going to be glad you live in, in Hutchinson, Kansas, in the Reno County area, because we don't have some of the craziness, and, a, a, you know, a little might try to bleed over here, but for the most part, the men of this city will chase you out. There's some men in this city. There's men in this church, and we're not going to let somebody come into this church and try to hurt anybody if we can keep from it, amen? We're prepared here. So just saying, and there's nothing wrong with being prepared. Amen. And so he says, and, and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tico. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. Now this, this guy has given the word of the Lord. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. We need to believe in the Lord our God. Our God is mighty to save. Amen. Amen. But we need to get in concert with him. We need to be in unity with his vision, not just our vision. His will be done. His kingdom come. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Well, we need to hear from real prophets in this hour. Amen. And I think there's some out there. It's just you've got to use discernment. Don't jump on every bandwagon that, that's preaching fear all the time. Amen. And don't get on the bandwagon where it's all la ti da Amen. Believe in his prophets. So also a part of warfare is listening to the men and women of God that you know are anointed, that you know have a good track record, whether they be prophets, pastors, evangelists, whoever they are that have a good track record, that are not self-serving, but they want to serve the people of God. When they start telling you that they're, they're hearing from God and if their track record proves that they hear from God, like in this church, there's a couple of us in here that have uh, the, our watchmen and watchwomen. We have a prophetic anointing and we don't just go around uh, you know, prophesying you to go to China and things. If we give you a word, it's usually pretty accurate or we don't say anything. You know, People come in the prayer line all the time and I'm like, God, give me a word for them. Can I give them a word? Well, I ain't got a word to give them, so I'm not going to make one up. On, you know, I'd love to tell some people, well, God's going to do this on this certain day. And this is going to happen. But if he's not saying it, I'm not saying it. Right. But I'm begging him for it <laughs> because I know you want it or the person that's in need needs it. But if he don't say it, then true prophets keep their mouth shut. Right. And they pray and they do what the Bible teaches you to do. Right. Amen. But believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. 2 Chronicles 20, 21. And when, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that, that they should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. 22. And when they began to sing and, and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Abam, Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Amen. The children of Israel didn't have to fight again. They, all they had to do was do what the prophet said, praise the Lord, amen. worship God, trust God. Can you say amen? amen. I'm going to tell you, if you're looking at some of the things that are going on in the political realm, every time they come against a certain man, uh, the people that are coming against them, Get it reversed right back on him. Say what you want. But if that man is truly anointed by God, come against him all you want. But eventually, you're going to get it because you're going against the will of God. And I'm not trying to say who I'm thinking of and saying is Mr. Perfect and Pure because we know he's not. But it seems to be 
that he's the man for the hour. And you might go, well, I don't believe that. I, that's, that's, hey, you vote for who you want to vote for. I ain't trying to tell you who to vote for. But I'm just saying, I'm not voting for people that believe in abortions. I'm not voting for people that want to ruin our country and run it into the ground. Because there are people here that I care about. And there's people I don't even know that God cares about. And if He cares about them, then I care about them. And you should too. Can you say amen? And I want the person in there that's going to keep things, not status quo, but it's going to reverse some of the, the stuff that's going on so we'll have a window of grace. Because I'm telling you, after whoever, they're coming back with a vengeance again. Trust me, they're not, they're not like some of us that go, oh, praise the Lord, everything's groovy now, let's just move on. They're back there figuring out how to do it. And for some reason, they have generational devils on them that motivate them. Some of them really, for generations, have been parts of families that, that have been working right hand in hand with the devil or the people that are being ran by the devil to destroy the world and bring the world into a one. Because you know what? They're so rich. They're so, they, don't, they got so much stinking money that now all they can get is power. They've won everything on the Monopoly board. And now they want to they want power and they don't like it that you are a useless eater and you breathe too much and you, you throw trash away and they're, they're, the earth belongs to them because they own it because they got trillions of dollars. That's how they look at it. But you're trespassing on my earth. They don't recognize your God given uh, right to live on this earth just like them because they don't believe in our God and the God they serve hates us and hates mankind. That's what we're up against. And it's a spirit. It's spirits. And it's, it's principalities and powers. Amen. And, and the Bible, here's the thing. The Bible says it's going to happen. If the Bible says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Pray all you want. Fight all you want. But I tell you what, we can't just give in either because Jesus said, Occupy till I come. And as we say, you should be believing in, uh, uh, that Jesus is coming in the next second and working like he's not coming for a hundred years. Amen. Preparing for the future. Blessed is the man when, God, when Jesus comes, he said, that I find doing. Yes. It's going to be a count. You know what, Sister Mary, if we're, if we're trying to build the kingdom of God and we've got plans on paper to, to build a new women's thing or a new you know, something for the community, and we're making plans, but Jesus comes in the midst of our plans, that will be acquired to us, how, whatever the right word to say that, that will be given to us as if we actually did it, the reward for doing that. Because Jesus is blessed as the man, and we say women, that when Jesus comes, he finds doing what? Doing the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. Is this Okay. And so, you know, the devil's got counter moves. Uh, let's go over to uh, Acts chapter 16. We'll be winding this up in a little bit. I hope you're getting a little bit out of this. We're well able to take the land. God's, God's saying to us in the spirit, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. As I was with Joshua, I'll be with you. As long as you're following his will and his plan, amen? And it starts by getting to know him through his word and then developing a personal prayer relationship with him, knowing who the Holy Ghost is. I'm amazed. A lot of people uh, get deceived so easy. Uh, I hear them, you know, that one week they're flowing with God and next week they're, they're talking weird stuff. Double-minded. Double-minded. Well, I think that it's just they, they can't discern because part of that double mind is, is not renewed. And they're still holding on to, to fables and things. And that's why uh, ministries like us that are full gospel, not saying we got it all or that we're perfected in it all, but we have a significant amount and we have enough people in here that have been around the mountain several times that, that are stable people in the Lord right here in this place, this little church right here. Uh, you can discount it. You can do what you want, but God is working through this church. He always has. As big or small as it is, it, he has worked through it, and he's working through others in this town. Amen. You know, it's not always the size, although size is cool too. The more size you got, the more money you got to use to preach the gospel, if that's what you do, instead of building giant houses for everybody and, you know, limousines and things. Not about that. There are some, some ministers who need an airplane. There really are, because they travel all over the world. And it stinks to be in those clunkers that, that we all fly in. 
and, and, and it takes a lot longer to get where they need to get. Uh, some of them need it. They've earned it. Yep. They don't need five of them and 15 mansions. Just saying. Right. Where there's only three people living in them. Right. Okay, so there, there's a balance in all this. All right. In Acts chapter 16, I'm going I'm to narrate this and then give you a couple scriptures with it. In Acts chapter 16, you got Paul. And, and uh, they're, they're going about, Paul and Silas are going about. At this time, John Mark kind of created a rift between Barnabas and Paul. So uh, John Mark and, and Barnabas went their way, his nephew and him. And then Paul took Silas and they began to travel. And uh, they came into uh, to the region where they were at ministering. And there's this little girl following Paul around because you know what? Part of her, part of her soul wanted what Paul had. And then he, she followed him around and said, These are the men of God. Hear them. They're the holy guys, you know. And Paul's like, Okay. These are the men of God. And hear them. And he's like, I don't know why she's saying right, but I got this irk inside of me. Ever get an irk? Come on. It sounds right, but I'm irked. Why am I irked? I don't, you know what irk means? Yeah. You don't really know what it is. It's just something is just not setting right with you. And finally, he gets enough of it after she's followed him around. He says, come out of her in Jesus' name. And that spirit left her, and she got saved. But these men that were using her as a prognosticator to make money off this gal, no longer did she have that spirit in her. She couldn't read fortunes anymore. She couldn't talk to the dead for him anymore. She lost that ability because that ability came by psychic power fueled by a spirit. So these men got really ticked off, right? They got mad because uh, she was their moneymaker. And they, they got Paul and Silas and uh, got the magistrates against them, beat them, amen, tore their clothes off them and beat them and threw them in a prison. And so uh, Paul cast the devil deep. Paul did a good thing. He did a work for the Lord. Well, the devil countermoved it and got people stirred up and threw them in jail, Right? Okay, so in Acts chapter 16, verse 22, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes, tore them off a pall in them, and commanded to beat them. Verse 23, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Verse 24, Who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, made their feet, Fast in stock. Not only did they get beaten, but they got put in stocks. I don't know about you, but I got ADD and I can't sit still for a moment. Either my fingers are wiggling or my foot's moving. You know what I mean? Or I'm twitching or I'm trying to stretch my muscles. Because sitting still for very long is difficult. And when you get older, it's even worse, right? So just saying, can you imagine that? I think Paul was probably a hyper dude. Because he, he just seemed to have limitless energy, didn't he? And so they're in prison, they're in, their feet are in stocks. Now, at this time, the majority of, of us, including me, would have been, gee, God, I don't think I'm going to heal nobody anymore. I'm not casting out any more devils. Look what happened to me. We'd be whining. And I'm sure they felt like it. I don't know about you, but my dad has given me a spanking or two that, that gave me a few little welts one time. You know, nothing major, but, you know, I don't know if you've ever been spanked good enough. You've had a red mark or two on your rear end, and it, it don't feel that great, does it? Or your leg. Well, these guys were getting the cat of nine tails of whipping them and ripping them up. You know, Paul, Paul talked about it. He said he got whipped like that five times. Jesus once, Paul five times over the course of his ministry. So here they are sitting, sitting there. And sometimes, I don't know that they did it to these guys, but sometimes one of the things they like to do was take a bucket of brine and go... Well, there's a good thing. It'll cleanse the wound, but it sure does burn. I remember going to the beach, you know, with uh, the salt water and having a cut. It healed it up pretty quick, but it sure did hurt. <laughs> it made it sore, right? But at midnight, it says, verse 25, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. So the devil counteracted and God counteracted. 
and, and, and the thing is, it gives us a type and a shadow of how the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Because I believe those other prisoners felt like they were in hell. Well, you know, the jailer, he's like, oh, my goodness. He was ready to get on his sword, the, the word says. And instead of falling on his sword, Paul says, oh, no, wait, we're all here. Don't do that. Well, long story short, he ended up getting born again, too, and his house. But can you imagine that? You start praising and worshiping God, and God just discomforts all the devils everywhere around them. That city was full of devils, by the way. It was one of those metropolises that were probably dedicated to Athena or Diane or whoever, one of those goddesses. And, and Paul just came in there and disrupted them all. Took away their money maker, got her saved, got the jailer saved. Probably all those prisoners were giving their heart to the Lord. His house came to the Lord. So, you know, the devil overplayed his hand. But what did it? Praise and worship. When we praise and worship, there's the examples. You know, God tells us to worship Him and praise Him. Can you say amen? Uh, I'm going to run another one down for you. And, and we'll go through it quick because we don't have much time. 2 Kings 19, 14 through 20, and also 34 through 35 if you're taking notes. And it's where Sennacherib, this Syrian uh, warrior and king, who had been going around bullying all the nations around Israel, and now he'd come against Hezekiah. How many of you know Hezekiah was one of the good kings? He did right in the sight of the Lord. But uh, Sennacherib comes and he's railing against God, and he says, you know what? Your God ain't nothing. None of the other gods have been able to save these other people that I've subjected. Your God will be just like that. Ooh. Well, Hezekiah began to pray, and call upon the Lord along with, uh, with Isaiah. And the Lord spoke to Isaiah and said, Go tell Hezekiah such and such. This guy says all this stuff against me. You know what? I'm going to take care of him. And so there was a prayer of agreement. When you and I are under, under warfare mentally and stuff, going back to where we were at the beginning, that's why you need a body of people. Yeah. My mind has been so messed up by, by the enemy just bashing against it at times. That if I didn't have my wife, Pastor Craig, or Pastor Kelly when he was with me, I would have went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I'm telling you, the devil can get in your mind and mess with you to the point, especially if you have regrets, you have uh, maybe some sin that's not completely under the blood, or, or unforgiveness especially. If you've got unforgiveness, man, I'm telling you, the tormentors, are, they have a right to your brain. That's why you want to forgive quick, because after they torment you a lot, you're going to be willing to do whatever just to have peace. Amen? And so <clears throat> he's, getting, he's getting assailed by, by these, this guy, and they pray together. And so the prophet sends, sends to Hezekiah and tells him, hey, the Lord's going to take care of this nutshell right here, okay? And so when they come against, when, he, when Sennacherib and them come against him, Israel wouldn't have been able to withstand him in the natural. God sent an angel. Here we go to the ministry of angels again. One angel killed 185,000 men in one night. I'm telling you, when you're beleaguered, when you're under the gun, and you're praying, and you get into a prayer of agreement with the man of God, the woman of God, uh, brother or sister, that prayer is very powerful. Jesus said... Uh, if any two of you agree in Matthew chapter 18, if any two of you agree as to touch in anything on this earth, it shall be done for you by my Father which is in heaven. So the prayer of agreement is a very powerful tool of warfare. And in this case, the, this example we have, an angel came. Hezekiah didn't even need to fight. Isaiah didn't have to fight. The armies of Israel didn't have to fight. The angel came and just slaughtered them. I mean, I, I hope that we're able, when we get to heaven, to watch some of these video clips. <laughs> Not so much that I want to see people getting slaughtered, but I just like to see a big old angel coming down. I mean, you know, an angel did that in, in David's time because he, he disobeyed the Lord and numbered the people. And I can't remember how many people the angel killed. But he took out a whole bunch of Israelites, and David's like repenting big time. You know, God, I'm the one that did it, not my people. Well, God says, well, now you can't number them anymore. I told you not to number them. I don't know what the deal was. I can't remember. But God didn't want him numbering the people. I guess it was because he was going to rely on numbers. And we saw that in, in the case of, uh, of Gideon. 
fleeced God, he got fleeced. Amen. All right, last thing I want to talk about, and it won't take a whole long time. Another a weapon of our warfare is the Psalms. Psalms 24, a psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Don't forget that, church. The world and they that, in, that dwell therein. Verse 2, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. These are songs. These are songs that, I know they don't sound like our songs, but they were things that people would quote and, and, and confess and sing. For he founded, and this is David, you know. He, I mean, he's, he's using this to fight a mental warfare right here. For God, he founded it upon the seas, established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, a devout person, right? Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Now, if you've done that, you can repent and be forgiven for it, and it'll be wiped away. Amen. That person, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Psalms 24, 6. This is the generation of them that seek him. They that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. What? Well, we're gates. What do we, when we lift up what's coming through? Well, let's watch. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Amen? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Selon, my refuge and my fortress. Yes. Psalms 91, 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Of the, this is something that soldiers, when they were, I, I know of soldiers when they were over in Iraq, first and second time they were there, would, would keep this psalm and would read it. We would pray it over our son. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, you got to dwell in the secret place. That means your heart's got to be God's. I will say of the Lord. So you've got to say the Lord is your Lord. Amen. Yes. This is what I'll say of the Lord. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. I'm not trusting in Donald Trump or Biden or any of these other people out there. I'm trusting in the Lord. And if God seems to use one of them, well, He's only going to use one of them. <laughs> the other one, I don't think He's got anything left, but that's just my thoughts. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Now I put not thee, but me. Okay? He shall cover me with His feathers, and under His wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in, in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Only with my eyes shall I, shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, uh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways." They shall bear me up in their hands, lest, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall, shall I trample under my feet. Because, he, because I have set my love upon him, he says, because I've set my love upon him, therefore he will deliver me and he will set me on high because I have known his name and he's known my name. He shall, I shall call upon him. He'll hear me and answer me, and I will be with him, God says, in the time of trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. You love Jesus? Amen. I'm telling you, fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Lay hold of, uh, of the kingdom. Lay hold of truth. Amen. Lay hold of your salvation. You've got to get some moxie in you at this hour. I know some of you are suffering in a lot of different ways and going through things just like everybody else is, but it's relative to you. You know, my suffering's relative to me. You know, nobody's suffering more than me. <laughs> I know that's not true. 
But I'm just saying, uh, things are going to come, and things are going to go, and we're going to go through some seasons. But the end, the end of it all is that we're going to be with Jesus in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to do my best to stand strong in the Lord when trouble comes. Amen. And I'm going to believe in my God. I'm going to believe that He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Can you say amen? And I'm going to get in agreement with people that are in agreement with God. Amen. On my behalf, on their behalf. And I'm going to see the reward of the wicked, evil spirits that are trying to destroy people. Yeah. Amen? That's not just something I'm saying. It's something that we're doing. Yes. Amen? And I'm telling you, most of you that have been around the block a time or two, you know how to fight. But sometimes you get weary. Well, I want to pray for you tonight before we leave. Amen? Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters that are here and those that are not here tonight that, but call this church home. I pray, Father, that you would strengthen them by your power. Lord, that you'd cause them to be mindful of your presence in their life, that they would be mindful, Lord God, of, of the salvation and the inheritance they have in Jesus and the authority that Jesus has given them, not only in miraculous deeds, but also in authoritative power to command and push back the enemy. Lord, the, the power that they have through their voice using the word of God, not only to motivate angels on behalf of the saints that will inherit the kingdom of God, but also in warfare to fight against the enemies that, that are in the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, Lord God. Lord, cause us to be people that are strong in you in the power of your might. I bless these people that are here tonight, Lord. Your, your people, your servants, your kids, Lord. I bless them in Jesus' name tonight. And I pray that your blessing will rest upon them, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened this week as they study your word and seek your face, that you'd show them really cool things, Lord. That you'd show them great and mighty things that they didn't know before. Lord, I, I'm looking for, for, for things to come back to me and people to say to me, Pastor, this week God showed me something in his word I never saw before because I get excited when it happens to me. I want to see them be excited too, Father. But more than anything, Lord, I want to see them loving you until they're called to be with you in heaven, Lord. Bless them, protect them, prosper them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you guys.